Right, in the last video we looked at mutually exclusive events. Let's have a look at this problem. The table below shows the number of students studying maths and physics in the sixth form. It says find the probability a student studies either maths or physics, both maths and physics and maths only. So if we write the probability of M union P from like our last video, that's the probability of M plus the probability of P, M standing for maths, P standing for physics. That's going to be 45 out of 60, because it's 45 out of 60, plus 35 out of 60. If we add those together, we get 4 over 3. Let's pause the video now and have a think about getting a probability of 4 over 3. Okay, you should have realised that this is greater than 1, and therefore it's not possible. So with somewhere it's been a mistake. So if we calculate assuming every one studies at least one of these two subjects then we have 45 plus 35 minus 60 is equal to 20 so what's happened is that we have 20 students who are actually studying both maths and physics if we use a Venn diagram that might be a bit more clearer so we've got, what we've got here is an intersection we've got 20 studying both well, how many study maths only well, you do that by, there were 45 that study maths altogether, minus the intersection, which means it's 25 study maths only. And then how many studied physics only? Well, there were 35 that studied physics, but there were 20 that studied both maths and physics. So that's going to be 15. And if we do 25 plus 20 plus 15, we do get 60. So the probability of M union P. P in this case is the probability of M plus the probability of P minus the probability of the intersection of both sets. So that's 45, if we want to do this just using numbers, not a Venn diagram, it's 45 out of 60 study maths plus 35 out of 60 study physics and then we have to subtract those who study both, otherwise we're going to count them twice. So we're going to subtract 60 out, uh, 20 out of 60. Now that gives me 60 out of 60, when I work that out, which gives me 1. And which is right, because everybody at least studies one uh, subject in this problem. Right, the probability that they study both maths and physics, well that's just going to be the intersection. So the set notation, probability of M and, is the correct term here, P. So in English, the intersection generally means and. We get 20 over 60, which is two thirds. Okay, and the last part we were asked to find the probability the studies maths only. Now in the in the Venn diagram, it, it's represented by this bit only. Where so the answer is going to be 25. Now in a set notation, that's going to be all those in M intersected with not P. So you really need to know a little bit about your intersection of uh, sets here. So the, the set notation for that is the probability of M intersected with not P. If you're not sure about that, uh, pause the video, draw a Venn diagram, shade M and then shade not P and you'll, the bit that's double shaded will be this bit here where it's just 25. So that's going to be 25 over 60, which cancels down to 5 out of 12. OK, so let's establish some rules. So in general, if we got intersecting, i.e. there's a probability of both, so this is the number in A intersection B, then in sets, we have number of A union B is equal to the number in A plus the number in B, and then because you've already counted the number in A intersection once, you have to subtract it. If we're going to apply that to probability, we have to divide each of those by the universal set, the number in the universal set, so that this is divided by the number in the universal set, this is the number in the universal set, divided by the number in the universal set, the number in the universal set. Now the number in a set divided by the a number in the universal set is the probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B 
minus the probability of A intersection B. Now, if the probability of A intersection B is equal to zero, then we go back to the previous video where there is no intersection. This is, we then have the probability of A union B, just the probability of A plus the probability of B. We are subtracting that, but it's actually equal to zero, so we don't bother writing it in. And this is known as mutually exclusive events, like we looked up before. One event, if one event happens, the other cannot happen, therefore there is an intersection. Okay, so what we've looked here is in detail what to do in the two cases where you have probability of one event or the other event. The second case here is what we have is known as mutually exclusive events. I hope you've understood and I thank you very much for watching this video.